going on, guys? Michael here, 360 Digital Closing Bell Week. Look back podcast here on this gorgeous September 10th, 2020. As mentioned, I am your humble correspondent, Michael Tanner, joined by the executive producer of the show, the purveyor of the show, the director and publisher of the world's greatest website, international news aficionado and international man of mystery, Stuart Turley. How are you doing this morning? I'll tell you what, it's a beautiful day in the neighborhood, but my head is spinning from all the news this week. It was, it was a wildly busy week on top of a lot of the dashboard stuff that we rolled out. So uh, we'll, we'll be touching on some of that stuff. Uh, if you're listening to this, guys, we're recording this Friday morning, October 2nd, 2020, here about 6, 19 a.m., waiting for the pit to open here at about 7.30. You know, yeah, big news right off the plate before we get into it. President Trump positive for COVID. So markets, you know, futures values look down. Yeah, I don't know. I think, I think it would be interesting, Stewie, between me and you, I think – Trump's kind of excited to get it because I think he's going to prove to everybody that it's not that big of a deal. He's going to pass it. He's going to be fine and get out. And part of me thinks that's what he thinks the strategy is. Now, we'll see as it plays out. This is very early, but early, you know, it'll be interesting to see how it plays out. But that's my guess. All right. Now, Michael, who in the world would be dragging their tongue across everybody's meeting desk in order to get COVID for a political stunt? Wow. (laughs) No, I don't think it was a political stunt. I think Trump will use this as an opportunity to, in his mind, I'm not saying this is going to happen because I think Trump will use this as it will attempt to use this as an opportunity to show how quickly he can rebound from it. And hey, look, it, you, you get it, you quarantine, it goes away, and you move on with life. I think that's what he's hoping comes out of this because that'll be a big boon for him, especially if this vaccine continues to get delayed. Because between me and you, Stu, I ain't getting the vac. I ain't the first one getting the vaccine. I don't, I don't know, know if anyone's that. talked about that. There ain't no way I'm the first person. Oh, no way. You know, everybody's going to grow a third arm possibly with that vaccine. Who knows? I mean, there Uh, are some side effects I'd be interested in, but the third arm is not one of them. (laughs) But you know what? Uh, Trump is so positive about so He's a cheerleader for the U.S. Love him, hate him, whatever it is. He is flat a cheerleader. And uh, he could actually make a positive out of a roadkill. So you're right. I agree. He's going to make a positive out of this. I, yeah. So we'll see. So that's just, I mean, we're, that's like I said, we're sitting here 621 AM um, breaking news. We actually have a lot of breaking news, but um, we have a you know great show for you guys lined up today. You know, as always, we digress to begin. Uh, we're going to cover everything that happened this week in the oil in the oil and gas markets. I mean, a bunch of stuff. WPX and Devin combined. Now all of a sudden, there's a shareholder. Um, um, there's a shareholder activism lawsuit, Stu. We can get ourselves hands on. Did you own any WPX stock by chance? Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> there's a shareholder activist um, by Weiss and LP. We'll cover in the story. We can get in on it. Um, you know, there's some ESG stuff. I think we need to cover Colorado officially approves the $2,000 foot back on Tuesday, Wednesday, we, you know, Wednesday, you know, during the show on, uh, on Wednesday, we were able to, to cover a little bit of what happened in Tuesday night's debate only from the coverage of what that is going to look like for the fall of energy policy. I could care less about watching that whole thing. Holy smoke. Oasis finally declares bankruptcy. And then we held that funeral on Wednesday as well. On yesterday on the show, we had to hold Lone Star's bankruptcy. There's a great thread on Twitter. I'd recommend checking out. Looks like that. No, deal is going to get exported. Stu's going to cover everything on the international news desk for the week. Looks like there's a lot of cheating up and down the board. But first, guys, this show is brought to you by the world's greatest website, oilandgas360.com, the place for all of your energy news, energy finance news, energy technologies. I'm telling you guys, if you need to know anything about what's going on current in the oil and gas markets, use that website. Because trust me, me and Stu, Stu's the publisher. I help him post stories. So trust me, we're not missing a thing here, guys. Highly recommend checking out. Go to the 360 uh, digital cl- or go to the 360 news desk. Go to the 360 ex- energy expert at the top. Hit the drop down. 360 news desk. Bookmark that page. The place for one stop shop, as I call, for all of your energy finance stuff. We've got equity over tables, current price of oil, top news that I curate every single day to make sure all of the stories that we run in the closing and all the stories that you need to know if you're in the industry are there. We have all of our past daily shows. Which run live on YouTube, 2 p.m. Mountain Standard Time, and we have all of our uh, um, week weekly podcasts that we do that are available on the Oil and Gas Show. Thank you for everybody listening on that podcast and the 360 Digital Closing Bell podcast on the oil and gas 360.com you can also find the en- the three the energy expert network which is the place for energy thought leadership it's an interview series that Stu curates we have some crazy people coming up we dropped rob of inveris i saw them post us on twitter a couple days ago did a little retweet 
a little they, love from it. They're still waiting. By the way, we're still waiting for our uh, um, uh, um, um, our uh, um, our Inveris data package. Did you get on oh, yeah. uh, Alan Gilmer about that? Not with this crazy week, but uh, I'll, I'll I'm just kidding. But if anyone from Inveris is listening, we would we'd love DI. You can just throw no, that. I'm, give us a login. It's very simple. I know how SAS works. I'll be over at his house on Sunday night for Sunday dinner. Good. And just tell them we know how SAS works. It's a login. It's a scalable technology. It's 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 three clicks. S Turley, entercominc.com. My M Tanner, entercominc. It's pretty simple. You bet. Hey, Batman. Um, oh, wait a minute. If you're Batman, that makes me Alfred. I was gonna say you're Batman. I'm Robin. Point is, who do you have coming up on the on the? I know we have Matt Marshall. Yes, uh, Matt Marshall uh, is. I've got I had it ready for yesterday, and we ran into a scheduling conflict, so he'll be going out this morning. And uh, then we have some really cool ones. Uh, we got Rudolph coming out of Europe, uh, coming out. We what? have, yeah. Not Rudolph. Not Rudolph. Was this another one of your massive textbooks? <laughs> oh, the Kremlin Games. Kremlin Games. We got that one coming up. When are we recording that? Um, I hope next week. Oh, it's not even on the books yet. Okay. So yeah. we're still working this one down. So this is how you come oh, yeah. to the show for the inside story. If you guys want to hear on anybody, if you want anybody to be interviewed or think there was a great interview, email Stuart Turley, S Turley, entercominc.com, M Tanner, entercominc.com. Our emails will be in the show notes. Love to interview anybody. Of interest. True. I think there's a lot of interesting people out there. <laughs> we also have shale specialists we need to run. Well, we'll probably cut that for next week because that's a oh, two-part. Uh, and it's not time sensitive. No, and uh, Reese. Uh, well, we're we gonna run that next week. State of the midstream address with Steve Reese. I'll tell you what that uh, Steve Re uh, Reese Consulting Midstream Consulting knows their stuff. Great, great people. Well, and I mean, we also have another call with them next week. Yes, we do. We've also we got a lot of calls next week. It just continues to get. Busy, you can check all of that out. Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and 360 Ener or Energy 360 Podcast. There's so many, we have so many different shows on here. I, I can't keep in fact. The point is, you can find there, there's so much content from us, guys. Um, it's probably overload, but we appreciate each one of you listening. Um, yeah, I mean, that's all really I've got for, for, for the introduction stuff. I, you know, in terms of clerical work. I think we should start with some breaking news, though. I, we mentioned COVID um, has, has gotten to President Trump. Um, there's a couple other things that sort of tie into what happened maybe yesterday, but I think we need to run it as breaking news now. Okay, a uh, couple things. I want to give a shout out to the folks in Lebanon. They did not deserve that uh, blast. I believe it was four weeks ago now. Uh, there's Beirut. Uh, Beirut. Yeah, Lebanon, Beirut. Oh, uh, that yeah. tells you how much I know the international world. Oops. <laughs> well, just <laughs> okay, Batman. <laughs> um, anyway, uh, Robin. Uh, okay, uh, they they have um, uh, arrested forty people, and Interpol has announced they're going after the owners that had left it there for six years, as well as the captain that left it there. And the captain was a Russian captain. So Russian interference and a bombing, who knows, who knew that was coming? Uh, again, that was breaking. This so you morning. told me Russia's involved. Yeah. That was breaking from Russia there. Yeah. From Interpol this morning. Uh, I just, uh, that not was that I, not that I would have get, I'm being, I'm being honest when I say not that I would have guessed that, but now that you tell me that I'm not surprised. I would, I was, it caught me blindsided. Okay, we, the Mediterranean and Club Med, uh, with all of the folks in Club Med, and Club Med are the five. So just, okay, so I think what you should do right now okay. is cover the what happened with Club Med this week leading up to this incident, and then we'll cover everything. We'll walk through the shale news this week, because I think it's important to get the timeline right on this, correct? Oh, absolutely. Um, six years ago, when I just kidding. <laughs> when I no. was a young boy. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's a lot of time. We don't have that kind of time on this podcast. No, no, uh, Moses and I were buddies. Now, look, uh, on Friday, uh, let's see here. Greece called for pr 
uh, peaceful resolution uh, of all this kind of stuff going on. And it is being, we have three peace deals going on, uh, being brokered. Two were announced earlier in the week and we have another one going yeah, on. Yeah, it was what President Trump signed on what Wednesday or Thursday of last week. Yeah, so then he's been nominated for two um, um, Nobel Peace Prizes. Nobel Peace Prizes, and he's got four more coming up. And not Nobel Prizes that I know uh -huh. of, but more uh, peace treaties. Okay, so then we go to um, on the 29th, <laughs> Libya. I, I feel sorry for the poor folks at. Um, uh, OPEC. OPEC cannot keep their herd in check. Uh, that everybody's overproducing, and this is not. This is going to be really tough to try to figure out how to keep worldwide markets nailed down. Uh, Libya. Uh, let's see. Let me get the stats on that. Uh, we also had Petrobras. Uh, two billion dollars in revolving credit line go off. That was just a side note on that one. It's a couple uh, billion between friends. Oh, absolutely. And I'm trying to get that one. Okay, OPEC. Uh, it rises. Uh, September output rises, and there were some serious good nuggets on this one. Iranian supply. Iran. Uh, not even Libya. Uh, rose 120,000 barrels per day as ex uh, exports increased. Uh, Venezuela, who is exempt from all that, you know, so their number is whatever they can. Yeah. And Angola delivered the biggest increase of 60,000 barrels per day because of their higher exports. So whatever numbers they have, OPEC is trying to play whack-a-mole and they can't do it. So um, the Libyan output on the 30th, got pulled up to $300,000 per day. You know, holy smokes, Batman. I mean, that is like, they're just unbelievable. There are three tankers on the uh, 30th, uh, 1 million barrels from uh, Hargia. They had another one for 630,000 barrels. And the port in the Crescent in Libya, it's called the Crescent because it has all the oil fields there, has yep. more than 4.5 million barrels worth of oil in storage. Let's throw one other piece. Woo! Of Woo! Woo! Yeah. That's a storage number for you. Oh, yeah. That's more than your and my uh, bathtub. Now. Uh, Just a smidge. Yeah, just a smidge. It's more than a bathtub ring. Okay, here's um, here's the interesting part. Turkey and Libya, Tur uh, Libya asked Turkey to come in and start uh, doing additional work in order to get uh, all of this additional oil back online. They had been at, what, 90,000 barrels and they yeah. were making no money. They're you can see what Turkey's influence have. And then in the Mediterranean, they have claimed the whole Mediterranean between Turkey and Libya for all the natural gas and energy dependence. If your head's about ready to explode, guess what? Mine already did. Okay. Here is the yeah, highly- mine, no, Mine's exploded. I'm puking on this okay. round world okay. trip. Here is the- uh, oh, here This is good. This is yeah, good stuff. This, this is the highly technical- uh, this is the crescent right over here because you got it all right in there. That's the crescent, everybody. Woo! Okay, enough about the crescent. Let's come over into. Oh yeah, we had one other one. Uh, this is a war broke out. Um, where was the war? Uh, Azerbaijan used to have an impact on the uh, world oil. Uh, they don't. You can be a subscriber to Oil and Gas Three Hundred and Sixty. Premium dashboards yes. for a cool $60 a month. You can find out they're not in the top 10. Nope. <laughs> they haven't been for a while. No. Hey, by the way, uh, those dashboards are coming out real quick as a shout out to us on that. Um, they uh, are going to have lots of worldwide production and OPEC and, and all that kind of stuff. So on October 1st, which was yesterday, Libya was set to at, at least 
uh, 240,000 barrels per day of crude in October sustained. It could go higher. So that was as of yesterday. Um, the They still talked about the three cargo ships uh, coming in on that. Okay. Oh, pet cheating? Uh, oh, yeah. Uh, you know, they're, it's beyond that. Okay, now. Let's come into uh, to this morning. I got it off of uh, uh, the news desk about two o'clock uh, this morning. And EU sanctions Turkey and puts them on notice. But the nuggets in here are they are sanctioning individuals and possible companies. That kind of sanction is not going to work. So the EU has no teeth. They're rattling, Germany's rattling a saber against Turkey. And unless they do in sanctions, it's not going to work. But it just brings you up to know why Turkey is not in Club Med, which is those other five countries. So my head's really going nutty with all of this. Money. I'm going to have to start writing a book. This is, this is book worthy. Okay. You have to start writing a book. You will. And it just, it just goes to show you one if you're just as confused as I was about what Sue just talked about, it's, 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 it's why they're professionals to do this. Oh, it's, why they, it, it's why they pay people fresh. I mean, it's, it's incredible how Stu's able to put all this together. And, you know, uh, I, 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 I have a unique, I have a, I, I, you know, I, I, I'm lucky. I get to sit here every day and watch Stu throw out these news articles and be able to like, well, last week you mentioned this and see kind of the flow of the story. So, um, and if, unfortunately, if, if, I've been right. <laughs> Well, not only you, well, you're just, you know, and I don't want to say it's because it's because one, you're really smart. You were hard, but two, there's just an essence of you just have to be in it every single day. And the oh, yeah. longer you're entrenched in it, you're able to recall. I mean, you know, we've been doing this show now. This is the 52nd show we've done. We've done a hundred and they will be our 130th live show. We do at 2 PM. I mean, that's, that's, all, that's about 200 shows. We've got a pretty a decent bank of knowledge. If it's happened in the last year, yep, we've been on it. Oh yeah. And now, uh, I also was leading up and had been right on some of these things along. Israel and Lebanon talks uh, raise Pom uh, our Pompeo uh, and the Israel minister. Uh, he's a good looking dude. He's also, that's, uh, he's the uh, Israel minister of foreign affairs, Gab Eskenazi. I can't say it. He's a very nice guy. Um, but anyway, they are having those talks we're gonna call israel him bob lebanon bob <laughs> israel bob okay this is the third uh out of that group and there are three more coming so hats off to the foreign policy on all that so that is the club med in uh get your passport back into your bag and put your trade table up yeah um no, and I think that does a great job of covering really what happened, you know, really this, you know, really this week in the international news desk, um, I think as we'll get into um, what happened with the price of oil, we're going to bring up a lot of that OPEC cheating when we get into segment two. But, you know, let, let's just do a quick touch on some of the big shale things that happened this week. Specifically, let's start out on Monday. Um, you know, bullish trends actually in the overall markets. We saw Secretary Mnuchin. Um, and House Speaker Nancy Pelosi get together and have start some preliminary talks, which is you've been following the show all week, have turned out to be fairly positive. Looks like we're going to get um, some actual stimulus news. But a couple big things that happened on Monday from the U.S. shale site. CNX Resources completes their buyout of their midstream CNX midstream. So that's, that can be a nice combo there. I like the idea. I mean, again, anything that involves physical midstream pipeline, I am bullish on because there's only so much of that. Um, yeah, the other deal, obviously, everybody was talking about was Devon WPX combined to make a pretty fat new uh, um, Permian player. Give you some of the highlights from that. Um, Six billion in terms of the combined market cap of the new company, 12 billion in enterprise value under the terms of the deal. WPX shareholders are getting a fixed exchange ratio of 0.5165 shares of Devon common stock for each WPX common stock, equal to about $4.56 a share, which is about a 2.7% premium to the closing price on Friday. They expected to drive $575 million in annual cash flow improvements by 2021. Eh. We'll see if that happens. Deal creates one of the largest U.S. unconventional oil producers. Again, I'm reading off a slide deck here, so just remember that. 
Uh, 60% of that of their uh, 400,000 acre net position is in the Permian and they project about 60% of their production. Um, you know, they claim free cash flow and oil trading slightly below 40 bucks. Right now they're completely unhedged because they liquidated all of uh, WPX came in liquidating all of their hedges for this. So that's, you know, someone's busy over there at Aegis, I think, you know, I don't know who's doing that. I don't know if it's, I don't know who is it. Maybe it's Bank of America Securities. I don't I hope it's Aegis. We love those guys. Someone's busy over there rehedging this new company. That's a, that's a nice big bill they've got. Oh, you bet. And uh, uh, Matt Marshall talks about that with Aaron Vandefort uh, in our one we're releasing today. Yeah, and the idea of how yeah. your hedge position can either help you or hurt you get acquired and how you can sometimes hedge up before an acquisition. And sometimes you unhedge yourself. You wind down your books because when you sell hedges, you generate cash because regardless, you know, you, you may have spent a lot of money and tied up a lot of capital to have this. Yep. Um, but you, know, but I mean, a lot of what these companies are doing now are costless callers. So technically you're not paying a premium, but you are paying a, it's, it gets very complicated. That's why called, you know, this is free. This is a free advertisement. Go call ages. They'll help you out with all that stuff. Um, I'd recommend watching Monday's live show. We brought on president of Intercom, Aaron Vandervoort. He talked about um, this deal. He he likes the deal a lot. I think he's a little more positive about it than than both. At least I am. I I just come at it. I, I you know this goes back to my Felix guys. I know people who used to work at Felix too. They they they're getting they they're getting shafted in this one. I think they're getting uh, they're getting the short end of the stick here because, as we mentioned. Why do companies merge? Why did these companies merge versus acquire, Stu? Well, it's to reduce GNA. And the only reason you merge to reduce GNA is because you can't cut anymore. So right. all of this is coming off, you know, I mean, there's just a lot of redundancies now. You've got two VPs of reservoir engineering. Well, you don't need that. Boom, one's gone. There's, you know, $300,000 in company. Oh, there's, you know, you don't need, you've now went from six reservoir engineers underneath them to 11. Eh, we don't need four of them. You know, so it's, 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 yeah. It's that's so where this price of oil, I mean, now it's 37 bucks. Holy smokes. This is where, you know, it's choppy waters ahead, I think. And, and you know, heart goes out to anybody, you know, and that's, and that's where I think, you know, the story moving off this was, is this going to kick off m a season? I don't know. And if you're an employee at an oil and gas company who you think might get acquired, yeah, that's not because you're probably gone. You know, especially at these prices, companies are acquiring to cut the staff of the people they acquire. It's just, it's how these companies look at it. They don't need two of everything. They might need 1.25 of everything in order to upgrade all of that acreage. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. And yeah, I just, our hearts go out to them. Yeah. So, uh, you know, check out all of that. We don't need to necessarily cover some of the details. Um you know, we kind of dove into, we, we read some of the press releases. Um, we, we, we dove into the salaries. Everyone's you know, getting a good, those executives getting a good deal. I'll give you that. I'll tell you that much. They paid themselves well, for sure. Uh, moving into Tuesday. Um, this is when, you know, as, as we mentioned this morning, uh, President Trump testing positive uh, for COVID-19. It was really Tuesday when was, was when kind of the first sniff of, oh, could coronavirus really be back? East Coast got hit really hard. First time they've saw 3% infection rates since uh, July. And that's, uh, yeah. So um, the other thing we saw was uh, consumer confidence jumped about 101, which is there's an expected, that, which, which is a decent rise. The problem is most markets traded down. It's about a half a percentage point down on the equity side. Um, Food oil again took another nosedive. This was off the back of expected, in, uh, you know, weaker than average inventory draws that we were going to see on the API. And what Stu mentioned, what we really ran on Monday was Libyan output much higher than what it should have been. OPEC's cheating left and right. We're going to see on Thursday, it was Iran that came out and was cheating both, which you could have seen if you're an oil and gas 360 premium subscriber. Check out our yep. webcast. Check out all for our dashboards, but that's really what drove it. It's, you know, when, when you talk about why does oil fall off the table of dollar, that's fundamental reasons a lot. And especially if you see the front month contract falling off, look at the back end of the curve. What's the back end of the curve doing? That's going to tell you how, whether this is a short term event or it's a, uh, uh, uh. like to give you an idea this morning, 
<laughs> people oil's down three dollars or oil's down 37 33 3.5 percentage points what do you think that's why do you think that is Stu? oh i there's about three reasons but trump getting covid and no also- because the back end of the curve is 3.6 percentage point the back end of the curve is up is down even more so you know what that tells me it's a long-term fundamental thing it's the iraq stuff coming out it's the long-term fundamentals of crude oil on the demand and supply side look horrible oh i uh, i would agree on that to uh, another point yes and uh we have a new source uh uh, forgot to tell you about that, uh, but um, Saudi Aramco has put us on the news list, so we'll start getting... You forwarded started. me those emails. I saw that. Isn't that cool? Well, now we know how they put together their emails, so we're just going to be emailing everybody left and right. Uh, it's dangerous when you give me what, what your structure of your company email looks like. I'm a sales guy. I'm a sales guy. I'll find anybody. I, th- I thought it was kind of funny because we had a, a worldwide... Um, uh, person approve us so and they reached out to us that was kind of cool because they're listening yeah we're you and i are going to host the ne- next opec meeting i want this show sponsored by saudi aramco so if you're listening whoever that contact is like it's cheap i we, we went over your quarterly statements guys you've got the cash <laughs> you've got the cash i you don't we i don't think you have to go i you know we're not going to charge you that much we're going to charge you like 1500 bucks a month i think you'll be able to get that approved at accounting i think oh, accounting will be able to get that approved and we're worth it oh it's you're getting you're getting ten thousand dollars a month worth of value for a low cost deal of what we'll end up selling you for um but uh, yeah you trust me you won't have to go to accounting when you see the bill it won't be that bad we'll take a tanker and trade I'm down. You want to give me a tanker, Stu? I will slant. We'll start slinging oil. Yep. Big news that happened Tuesday. I mean, St- Stu mentioned um, on the international side, there was actually a U.S. renewables fund that got launched um, in partnership with some European PEs. Really, those eh, the, the Colorado setbacks. We covered this a week and a half ago. Um, there was a, a four to five. There, there was sort of a roundtable discussion between the Colorado Oil and Gas Commission and you know people who are proposing what's called Senate Bill 181, which is amongst other things, regulating heavily where people can and can't drill, both from a tax perspective. Uh, I've done some analysis on the tax implications of Senate Bill 181 and some of the new language that they're rolling out, but then also physical locations of where you can't drill. Right now in Colorado, there's a 500 foot setback limit. Whereas if you are in 500 feet of what's called an occupied structure, which I am not a construction guy by any stretch of the means, but it's, I think it's schools, buildings, homes. I, I, it's something of occupied structure. You know, if there's running water in it, I think there's some county code or whatever. If there's gas, or something, something comes to whatever. They've now moved that starting January 1st, 2021. They've unanimously approved on Tuesday, which is interesting because on the Colorado Board of Oil and Gas Commission is uh, Bill Gonzalez, who I'm pretty sure is a former Anadarko slash Oxy guy. So interesting that he's in on this. He's probably, he's probably just hoping someone buys Oxy so he gets some rebrand of his you know who knows i'm just i'm just I'm just kidding he was against it two weeks ago and now he, he you know he was the, he was kind of the lone dissenter in that meeting if you watched it of of who was kind of for and against it and then comes around he votes for it so um he obviously you know he, 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 two weeks ago his quote was the science isn't conclusive i wonder what came became conclusive in these two weeks love to have him on the show bill come on you chat about it but uh um it sucks in terms, if you're a Colorado operator, because, um, you know, again, we do math on napkins here. You know, it, it, it looks like 90, you know, it's like 83% of PDC, 72% of extraction and 51% of all oxy usable acreage is now unusable, which is, you know, were they going to drill on that anyway? I don't know, because it's just acreage they own. But that, that really restricts where you can and can't put wells. I mean, you know, now you got just great reservoir engineers love this because they get not, they, they get an excuse to go figure out where they can put drill pads now. Uh, let me ask you a question. Um, what is this going to do to the tax revenue for schools, for roads, infrastructure, hospital? You know, anybody that's got tax benefits, city, uh, inf- you know, so this is a, this is a bigger impact than just that. So is going to lose big. Well, I think a couple things. 
One, we sell enough weed in Colorado where we're getting tax revenue out the wazoo. Two, right. two, but no, no, I'm, I'm dead serious. Like it's with the, a lot of the reason why you're seeing some of these policies come in and restrict other sources of revenues because we've picked up a lot of it from selling legal cannabis, which, okay, maybe, you know, I mean, it is what it is. So, you know, this kind of goes back two years ago when Boulder County came out and said he can't drill in Boulder County. And at the time, the Colorado Oil and Gas Commission and a, and a, and a much more conservative, you know, Hickenlooper was our governor, but he's a much more of what I would call a, a social liberal fiscal conservative. And he, he grew up with Colorado. He understands the, yeah, what oil and gas, the, the, the actual revenue it brings in and the amount of jobs it provides specifically to Boulder County. They allow and had this big fight. They now allow counties to fairly regulate what happens in their county and, and I suspect that that Weld County will, once this 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 happens, will vote to bring it back down to 500, which is the county in which most yep. of this production operates. I, so I, I that's all. I don't want to get myself in trouble, but that's I I have a a, a very good I, I have a suspicion that that, that they, they're going to okay. Well, great. Now that counties are in control of their own destiny. Definitely. As precedent was sent a year and a half ago. So is so are you gonna be calling Weld County a sanctuary county? Um, sanctuary county for drilling? It might be. I'm moving there. I mean I, I'm telling you, Stu, I'm it's there's there's few few fewer fewer places to live here in Colorado anymore. You've got you know, I'm here in Denver, I'm about I'm like five minutes north of downtown right now. Actually, I'm technically I'm like a Denver address in. I don't know if uh, my lease is up in March, Stu, a little inside baseball. I don't know. I don't know. I yeah. don't know. Yeah, Especially if we go new green deal, if we go new green California on us, yep. I'm out. But uh, so, yeah, we'll be following all that Colorado regulation stuff, Senate Bill 181. There's a, there's a lot of fallout. And like I said, it doesn't take place till January 20, you know, first, 2021. One reason why you should – subscribe not just to oil and gas 360 because we actually don't have this data yet so i'm not going to pretend to but you should go out and subscribe to something go go out and subscribe to a data package there are companies this is free advertising you know well database you can go find shell profile all of these guys these little data providers spend two three hundred bucks a month you get permit information watch permits in colorado stack up like nobody's business because if you can get this thing permitted and approved before january 1st guess what it's legacy so it'd be very interesting to see how a PDC. We saw this. Um, it, it, we, we saw this ahead of the of the 2016 elections. Do I watch, or excuse me, the 2018 election? I watched permit stack up in voting for Senate Bill 181 the first time. Wow. It was like 181A. Now we're on like 181B. I guarantee it. So this is just about like the gun laws, you know? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, everybody's buy, buying more guns than they ever have in the history of the, you know, the country. So we can help any oil and gas company, specifically PDC, extraction, or ox. If you need help permitting your wells, call us up. We'll get them turned around quickly before this deadline. Quickly. Yeah, for a fee. At this point, yeah. All right, Wednesday. Let's see. Let's move into Wednesday here. <laughs> Oh, yeah, that's what happened. We had the debate Tuesday night. Oh, my goodness gracious. Um, the only thing I'll say about that is we learned nothing really about either candidate in terms of their energy policy. Trump you know, said what he said, and, and, or not said what he said. He said what we expected him to say, nothing new. The only interesting thing we got out of Joe Biden and Vice President Joe Biden was he is not for the New Green Deal. He's for what's called the Biden plan, which I mean, it's probably on his website. I'm not going to give his website hits, but I'm sure you can go read about it. It sounds like it's $2 million or $2 trillion. $2 million. I wish it was only $2, um, two trillion in infrastructure and clean energy spending. Um, a Here's transition away from, from – it's basically setting the, the, the California mandate for 2035. And uh, their advertising people on this should be running uh, for a lot of political offices. The way they're advertising that uh, $4 trillion uh, is 
uh, because their kilowatt per hour is not going to increase and quote unquote, nobody is going to have to pay for that because the price of solar and wind is coming down because of technology. That is one of the single worst arguments I've ever had for making a decision on power. The decision on power is balanced. You got to have uh, hydro, nuclear, uh, gas, oil. Uh, you got to have it all because the market and the way it's set up in infrastructure. Put investments in hydrogen. Put investments. Do it right. But the cost per kilowatt hour is not going to pay for four trillion dollars of wind farms. Yeah, Sorry. no. So I'm just watching uh, their uh, Kramer's on CNBC right now. They're they're they're, they're chatting about do they think stimulus is going to be impacted by President Trump and COVID? Man, and what they're saying is it sounds like stimulus is now in better shape because Trump's got COVID. Oh. Now he's going to sympathize. So hey, for people like me who could use the twelve hundred bucks, I'm down. There you go. All right. Yeah. I, and so, no, I, I think you said, I, I don't want to get too deep into politics. I'm, I'm, I'm going to shoot myself in the foot. I'm just going to go take my foot, kick it into the, into the side wall of my door here and we'll get back. I just want to say this about politics and that is love one side, hate the other side, whatever it is, I'm tired of politics and I wish we would all get along as a nation. I don't care what side you're on. I don't care what political beliefs you're in. We need to work together as a country, regardless of who you are. I think we all should be Americans first. I don't care. Yeah, I'd be interested because I think I think every year they tell you this election is the worst. And when you go back to the 1800s, they were calling for the other candidate to be murdered. I mean, there were there were some crazy things that happened. Or so we've always had contentious election, but man, it definitely does feel worse this time. I agree with that. You know, something else that happened on Wednesday: we held the funeral for Oasis Petroleum, finally declaring Chapter 11 bankruptcy. Pure Bakken player, um, trying to cut about 1.4 billion in debt. Um, you know, I this is a long time coming. You know, they missed an interest payment about uh, a week or two ago. I think we covered it. Um, so, I mean, this was something that we expected to happen. Um, you know, it happened extremely quickly. What's hilarious. Um, and if they end up falling about 49%, um, some of the highlights, hundred percent of RBL lenders and 52% of the note holders will back this plan. Unsecured note holders are now getting hundred percent of new equity with 400 million, 50 million in dip and 300 million roll up of an outstanding RBL new money influx of 150 million. All hedges has been liquidated to reduce that RBL through this process. They've got a new $600 million borrowing base. That's up for redetermination that started yesterday. Um, you know, we covered it a little bit on the live show. They were down about 40, 50% pre-market trading ended up about 15, 20% down. Yeah. I mean, it'll be interesting. You know, they're probably going to come back. Um, now the real question is, you know, one, do they come back as Oasis Petroleum? Two, do they, you know, they, they're going to have to do something other than what they've been doing. You know, I, I think, you know, as, as, as I think what we'll cover with, you know, is this a chapter 22 setup? Probably, probably this, this, this looks like in, in 18 months, we'll be back in, in the same position with these guys. I mean, I don't know if North Dakota is making any money for the next 18 months. I don't know how in this precarious of a financial situation, I mean, you declare bankruptcy, people always say we're, you know, we're, 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 we're successfully as, as the, the news release will cover with EP energy successfully completes financial restructuring. A successfully complete financial restructuring. Man, just give somebody, give that guy a raise. Cause this is like, I, I was a million dollars in debt and I make a hundred thousand a year. And now I'm only $750,000 in debt, but I make 600,000, you know, I, or I, I make 60,000 a year. It's, 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 it's wildly. I'm not quite dead yet. Well, it's just, Okay, so Oasis is going to file Chapter 11. They're going to reduce their debt by 1.4 billion. Who, you know, the, the, it's the note holders that are taking it in the shorts. Who, whoever the people that are fun, who, whoever funding, who's ever funding this? Yep. It's just being a pure pocket player. I'm not bullish on it. It's it's all I need to know. Some of the headlines: Pure Bakken shale producer Oasis Petroleum. Oh yeah, that'll work. That'll work moving forward. Yeah. 
there's a couple of plays that I would not want to be pure play. And I think pure play is a good thing. Like if you take a, take a look at our, our friends over at Goodrich uh, down there in the Haynesville, uh, they're pure play gas in the Haynesville and they seem to be really well set up. And see, I've always thought the term pure play, I like it. I, my, my thing is what's your edge? What is your edge that differentiates you from the rest of the market? Um, and when you, and then you have to look at okay, so your 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 all your production is in the Bakken. Right. The Bakken is not is is one of the is one, is one of the few fields that's definitely not making money. Right, and 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 that goes back to the uh, Eagleford is probably a little more profitable than the Permian on takeaway. Uh, and you take a look at the Haynesville, it's got great takeaway. You look at the Marcellus up in the Appalachia and you have, they've been doing successful uh, low cost drilling up there for years. And so the well per drill is very low cost up in there. So it is per play, per play for pure play. <laughs> Say that five times fast. No. <laughs> Yeah, I, I no, I, a pure play is I know I, I, I get the term. It says I always think, what's this company's edge? What are they doing that's different? And what do I think gives them an advantage over their peers? Oasis doesn't do anything that I think gives them an advantage over their peers, or do they do anything that I think is monumentally different than what everybody else is doing? So, do I think this? Do I think we're going to see another Chapter Eleven, aka Twenty Two? Yeah, I, I do. Do you think they'll go to blockchain technology? <laughs> no. I don't I think they'll go to blockchain technology. No, but um, if you do call up our, our, our friends at Data Gumbo. If they want to save money. Yeah, no kidding. So quickly here, because I mean, we're over at 45 minutes here. Holy smokes, guys. Um, crude oil inventories also dropped on Wednesday. 2 million barrels on the downside. U.S. fuel production stayed the same. 10.7 million barrels were final utilization up to 75.8%. This point's great, great, great to see um, natural gas or uh, recent gas prices down to $2.17. Again, total U.S. stocks staying put 492.43 million barrels on that. Yesterday, excuse me, um, it was really a mixed bag for the markets. Uh, NASDAQ traded up in off the back of stimulus looked like it's going to get passed. And, and if you remember, stimulus round one was great for tech stocks. You know, everyone, ooh, you gave everybody 1200 bucks. It's kind of wild. They Netflix and buy stuff on Amazon. I guess when you're quarantined, it's about all you can do. But ooh, who would have guessed? So, uh, um, Stimulus round two is seen as a really boon for tech stocks. Overall markets were all right. Um, you know, it looks like there's going to be uh, some rebounds. They were up about a quarter of a percentage point. Crude oil prices dropped again off news of more OPEC cheating, this time on Iran side of it. Um, and it's OPEC's second largest producer that failed to implement compensation cut that it was that it was supposed to do to make up for overproduction between May and July. Crude oil prices at that point were trading down at about 38.59. Lone Star also declared bankruptcy. Um, we held that funeral. Um, this is another, I think, you know, I, I, again, I, I, you know, we, I, I, I like the management over at Lone Star more than I like the management over at Oasis or from, from everything that I've heard, never met either of them, just the way I look at it. Yep. This doesn't, I mean, the numbers still don't look as good. Sometimes when it walks like a duck, it quacks like a duck. It's a duck. Um, or, you know, covered in oil <laughs> for the no holders get 90, you know, if you're a common shareholder, you're getting 1%, but some of the high level numbers, RBL lenders are keeping 80% of their claims, which is about 150 million of the new RBL. So that's pretty decent. About 30 million is going up, um, to the new company, um, quote unquote, Lone Star nerd, uh, note holders, 96% of the new equity preferred note holder or, or preferred 3%. Commons getting 1% of the new game. RBL, the redetermination is coming in about 100%. You got 52,000 net acres, 256 production wells, 77% oil, 15% natural gas, about 8% natural gas by reserves. Current book value of about 225 million with 500 or 60 million in deficiency costs, 250 million in outstanding unsecures, 2.2 million in a CARES PPE loan they took out. Again, all hedges were liquidated um, prior to bankruptcy to repay debt, about 30 million off that. 
really high debt to EV ratio. So again, is it a 22 possibility? Probably. This is all courtesy of our friend War527 on Twitter. Gotta love this guy. Yeah, I mean, I'm just looking at it. Yeah, yeah. We'll see. We will see. Noble looks like that deal with Noble's going to get approved tomorrow. I'm just scrolling through some of the stuff here. That's a. Uh, we talked about that extensively on one of the shows this week. That's a good deal. It's a good deal, especially if you're bullish on the Mediterranean, which I know you are. So you love this deal. And, and you know, when we covered Elliott Management, tried to get in and, and cut that. Well, they're, they ain't getting on it now. It looks like it's going to get approved. Oh, yeah. Um, when I finish my book, that'll be part of it. I'll have a chapter on it. All right. As we sit here now, oil is thirty six ninety nine. Holy smokes, Stu. Well, we might as well just cover the levels for the week. As always, this segment is sponsored by Sandstone Capital Group. Again, these guys do great research. Just give them a call, 303-907-6825. Mention the podcast. That's where we get credit, sandstonecg.com. Fundamentals don't look good, Stu. I mean, we're about to see – I mean, we're about to see 12 month strip go under 40 bucks. 12 month strip sitting at 40 even right now. 40 mm-hmm. even right now, Stu. 40 even. Oh, my goodness. Who was it that was saying 65 next year? Goldman Sachs, everybody. When's this natural gas going to hit 350? I, I still think it will. It's 12, month stri- 12 month strips, 297. My price, 320. All right. I, 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 I don't doubt it. I, it. It probably will happen. I'm cranky this morning. So I'm, I'm, I'm bearish on everything. I'm bearish on everything. Well, you know, sometimes you wake up grumpy. Sometimes you let her sleep in, Michael. I should have slept in this morning, but that's all right. <laughs> Levels for the week, 30, 3672. Um, point of control for the weeks all the way up at 39.90. So that's okay. But I mean, we talk about fundamentals, just drive it down. Um, I'm not looking to get long per se. If you are looking to buy, you know, probably 3650 is a good level, 36 even, 36 uh, or 3748 on the upside, 3872 on the upside are two good levels to watch. It's probably ceilings in case we run a little bit. Talk of the I mean, majority of the volume for the weeks north, we're talking 39 to 41. Eh, you know, do I think we're going to see that? I don't know. Like I said, you know, oil's down off, off, you know, like I said, this is long-term fundamentals don't look good. Long-term fundamentals do not, not look good. And so um, that doesn't bode well for one, redeterminations, which are starting to happen right now. And two, yeah, I mean, you know, it is, you know, is this start, you know, the, the, you know, is this the lost, what they call 18 months where we have to get through this next still year before we kind of climb out of the demand? Cause this is all demand, Stu. This is all prospect and future outlook of what demand and supply looks like. It's all oil is, it's a pure supply demand commodity. So it seems, it seems, what was I going to say? Annoying to just hear supply, it's demand issues, but it's it's all it is. It's how this stuff trades, and then it trades off news. Tweets. <laughs> yeah, vice president and his wife just tested uh, negative. Pence and his wife, so they're good. Oh, sweet. Oh, now they're going over his timeline. Great. This is all you're going to see on the news. Is his talk about contact tracing. Holy smokes. <laughs> I turned that off on my phone. I got a new iPhone a couple weeks ago. I had to make sure to turn that. Because that folks, I was turned off. Oh, my goodness. Contact tracing on the press. That's what they're doing. They got his timeline up right now. Wednesday, he was at a fundraiser in Minnesota. Rally in Minnesota that night. Thursday, he had a roundtable in the morning in, in New Jersey. Then in the afternoon, he held a fundraiser. Great. This is all you're going to see on the news. No. Yay. Futures market's getting pounded, though, off this news. ES is down one and a half percentage points. Two and a quarter percentage points for uh, NASDAQ. Oh, I might have to get in and trade some of this. We might have to wrap this podcast. We have to wrap this podcast up early here. I'm going to hop in the chair, get some trading. We miss anything on the day, Stu. It's been – it's but we're sitting here about 50 minutes. Man, it's a, it's a long week, man. I'm, I'm beat down. 
uh, we're gonna get a hall pass. This is part one of a part two hall pass. Yeah, I need a hall pass too. When 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 can I give that out? We're doing we're going live today about one o'clock. Yes. Did you say twelve o'clock? One o'clock, two o'clock your time. Or do we want to go one o'clock your time? Uh, let's go one o'clock my time. So we're going noon. We're going live at noon to get you out of here early. I'm down. Yeah. I, I, I've got to hit the road. You do. We'll get start this weekend early, and we're going to go ahead and finish it up. Give you part one of a two-step hall pass process. Go ahead and cue the music for Stuart Turley. I'm Michael Tanner. Thank you for checking out the 360 Digital Closing Bell. Week Look Back Pod or Week Look Back Podcast available on the Oil and Gas Show and the 360 Digital Closing Bell. We will see you guys this afternoon to hand out. Our-